everyone and welcome to my new video and what is this video about? Well, I'm going to try and make some ethereal pads in Ableton Live. You know what I mean when I say ethereal pads? They're kind of those things that kind of go sort of wishy-washy, fluffy, cloudy, dark, uh, exciting, light, apocalyptic, scary, wondrous, euphoric. They kind of set this textural backdrop in your track, you know. Make it sound like it's coming from outer space. You know, it's sort of like, oh, I can't make the sound with my mouth. Or can I? Yes, I'm going to try and make ethereal pad sounds using samples of my mouth in Ableton, using some stock effects and samplers and other musical things. Right, so to start with, I'm going to get an operator in and I'm just going to draw in a C2 because I have terrible pitch, so I'm going to use that as a reference for singing... Um, singing that. Uh, okay. Let's see if that's worked. Okay. Uh, all right. Now I'm going to make a new track uh, and I'm just going to call this uh, Mike and I'm going to root that from my input, which is number six. If I monitor that, I'm going to get this, my 1970s computer sound. Transaction denied. Please try again. And I'm going to try and sing a note. I'm going to use the tuner uh, just to sort of give me a little bit of a visual guide on uh, if I'm actually singing that right. <clears throat> okay, let's try this. Uh, So, yes, I, that was hard work, especially at this hour of the morning. So I've recorded a, like a little bit of my voice there. It's a nice big block of sound. Let's have a listen to that, see how that's come out. Uh... Not bad. OK, so, I mean, that's that's a starting point. Um, let's just put that there. I'll keep that for later. Um, but I, I want to do some stuff with it. I want to freeze it. I want to, like, freeze it with some stuff. I'm going to freeze it with the spectral time and and uh, see how that sounds. And I've got my resampling channel here ready to just capture whatever I'm doing at any point. Uh, Let's put another tuner at the end and just see what the tuning's like. Yeah, perfect. Let's get that. Okay, a little quiet compared to the uh, input source, but that's fine. Let's turn that off. Let's try freezing it with something else. Let's try freezing it with the normal reverb. Well, that's fun. <laughs> okay. Okay, stop. Stop messing about. Right, okay. Let's see. Let's close that. Where's that tuner? Let's find a point when it looks like it's kind of in tune and freeze it. There. Grab that. Still pretty quiet, but it's okay. We'll go along with it. Uh, let's try. Let's try another one. Maybe I'll turn the quantize off for um, the, for recording, so I can grab them not on the next bar. Okay, that's fine. Let me try one more of these. Yeah, that's better. Okay. That was a nicer experience. Okay, let's try freezing it with something else. Um, where's the hybrid reverb? Okay, let's pull in the hybrid reverb and set it to algorithm. Turn the dry wet up. Let's grab that as well. Nice. Okay. Let's try a different reverb algorithm. Let's try the shimmer. to hit a good C. There we go. Okay, that was good. I haven't tried 
any of these algorithms, I just go straight to Shimmer. Is Shimmer still cool? Or is it kind of had its day now? Remember when Shimmer was such a big deal? And now it's everywhere. Has it's, it lost its appeal? I don't know. Uh... Some lovely, varying in level uh, samples of, of my voice frozen in time. And uh, we're going to use these as the starting point for our pads. So I'm going to leave all of that stuff there. Um, so when you download this later, you can play around with that. Okay, so now we're going to put that into sampler. Well, we're going to put some of them in and try some of them out, see what they're like. Let's try this first one. Uh... That's not particularly great. Just turn my keyboard on. Okay, that's a good starting point. So, um, I'm playing this chord. I'm playing C, D, D sharp, and G. And I could do a low C if I want. That's pretty good. That uh, sounds paddy to me. Right, so I'm going to turn on forward, backward, sustain. Only audio effects can be asserted in an audio track. I know that. Why are you telling me whilst I'm hovering over the sustain? Anyway, so that's going to go forward and backwards and loop like that. I'm going to pull in the loop start and loop end position a little bit and apply a bit of crossfade. Okay, and I'm just going to record in that chord. Good. Let's quantize that. Move it to the start and make it a bar long, legato it, and then duplicate it uh, like so. It's six. Oh no, not duplicate it. My bad. We need to duplicate the the time. Oh no, sorry. Times two. There we go. Yeah, times two. Let's times it up to sixteen. So now it's sixteen bars long. So we've got loads of time to play around with this. Actually, a good thing to do might be to actually check the tuning again. So let's let's get our tuner back in. Okay, it's a tiny bit sharp, so we can detune it here. Get it right down onto C. Nice. Okay, so pads generally have like a lot of filters and a lot of wishy-washy stuff on them to make them sound like they're moving around and they're sort of ghostly and, you know, apparitious. <laughs> Is that a word? Apparition. Apparition. Ghost like a ghost or ghost like image of a person. So would apparitious be a be a word? No. Anyway, no time for Googling made up words. We're gonna apply loads of filters to this now. I'm gonna use auto filter. because uh, I wanna stack up multiple filters and see if I can create some interesting kind of rather than just using one filter, use multiple ones set to different bandwidths going at different speeds to create this extra sense of movement. So I'm going to start with just using a low pass here. Quite slow. Whoops, that's fast. A bit of resonance. Not too much though, because then it starts to squeal and you don't really, don't really want that on a pad sound. Okay, let's group that. Duplicate it. Solo the second one, switch this to high pass. Set it to a slightly different speed, slightly faster maybe. Listen to them t together. Tasty. Let's duplicate that one again. This one could be a band pass. This is a band pass, isn't it? Let's hear them together. And we can pan them if we want to Give it even more movement. Okay, and maybe filter it even more. And maybe re 
reverb, more reverb. Where's the reverb? There it is. Okay, gonna make a couple of new scenes here and resample that. Okay, that'll do. <coughs> right. That's nice. Um, I'm going to swap that sample out now with a different one. What was this one? Okay, let's swap it out with this one. All we need to do is just drop that sample in there. And we'll have to uh, re re-instantiate these settings. Just pull in the start and end a little bit, apply a bit of crossfade. Let's see what this one's like without the reverb. Yeah, maybe a little too much resonance on the filters. I'll just pull them all down a little bit. Maybe the panning's a bit much. Just bring them more into the center. Okay, let's sample that. Okay, that's fine. Let's keep going. Just repeat the process. Drop in another sound. Oh my God, why do I have to keep going to the start? Right, okay, let's put that in. All right, they're all starting to sound a bit samey, so maybe we can do something about that. Maybe let's go up an octave <clears throat> with the chord. There we go. Let's turn the snap on so that they loop a little bit better. So snap will snap the start and end point to a zero crossing. You can't really see. Let's maybe normalize the... Yeah, so you can see that we're dead on the zero crossing there and we should be here as well. Cool. Sounds all right. Let's resample that. Yeah, they're a little bit quiet. I'm not too sure how bothered I am about that at the moment. Okay, let's try and drop in another one. Which one was that? Number three. Let's drop in number four. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Right. Move them in a little bit. Whoa, okay. The snapping is a bit aggressive when you adjust it here. Let's apply the... Why is it showing me that? Why is it showing me that warning? <laughs> I don't need that warning right now. Okay, let's resample that. I didn't check these ones were in tune. Oops. Well, you're going to have to do that when you do this professionally. Um, okay. Did I just resample that? Well, I'm slightly lost now. Got a bit distracted by my keyboard. Uh, that was number four. Okay. Let's drop in number five. Yeah, they're all sounding pretty similar, but oh, okay. It's fine. Maybe try the reverb before the filter. Could even apply. It's all just a lot of filtering, slow filters opening and closing and you don't have to use a sample of your voice. You can use uh, any synthesizer you want. I just thought a voice would be fun because remember people, your voice is a very useful tool. If you're, you know, if you're thinking like, oh, I really want that sound. Like, what's that sound that's really like, mm. then just do that. <laughs> and then you can make the sound. Okay. That's very quiet. Let's try one of these other ones. Let's try number six. So this was the one I think with the uh, with the shimmer reverb on. Let's just turn all this stuff off for now. Have a look, have a listen to them roar. That sounds pretty good by itself, I think. Let's find a nice loop point. Turn up the crossfade. It's pretty good. Let's sample this one without any filtering. And then let's do one. Uh, with the filter.
Filtering. Oh no, not that one, but this one. I'm going to ditch that filter for now and that reverb. Okay, let's get a sample of that. Let's make a new scene. Let's make a couple of more new scenes. Sample that in here. Okay, that one was good because it's a bit louder. Uh, how many have I done now? I don't really... How many did I sample? Uh, I've got one more. Let's just do this one. Well, this one's really loud. Wow. Okay. Uh, again, let's... Oh, that is very janky trying to find... Using that when the snap is on. Just use this instead. Okay, turn up the crossfade. Cool, that one is loud. Let's maybe turn it down a bit um, here. So sometimes you might want to have a slow attack as well. But because I'm making samples and I'm going to put them again into another sampler, I can do that there. So I'm not going to worry about that now. Let's just record that. All right, that was all cool. So there we've got um, some root notes for all our pads. And then we've got some chords of our pads. Because I think if you want to sample a pad, then you want to do that classic old school thing of like transposing it across the sampler and coming up with weird chord progressions by just transposing the sample. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm just clearing some crap off my keyboard. So I'm going to get sampler or simpler. I'll get simpler in. And I'm just going to drop one of these on here. I'm going to click normalize volumes. Is that really normalized? That don't look normalized to me. It's, anyway. Oh, hang on. Got to turn on monitor. No. Why aren't we getting any? Oh, it's because it's in Slice, not Classic. Wow. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you need to do is go up a minor third. So there's a little bit of a click at the start, right? So that's when you might want to apply like a bit of attack here. How far can we go? 20 seconds, that's too long. Maybe like 500, 500 milliseconds. That sounds pretty good to me. All right, we're going to set this one to loop as well. Uh, the same way that we did in the sampler. Um, maybe find like a good starting point. Not sure why the snap doesn't work here. Is that for the looping? Oh, oh, okay. Let's uh, let's address this, shall we? So the length is that ah, so it's the length that's snapping. But why not the start? Ah, no, very hard to tell. Oh yeah, no, that's definitely snapping. But that is, have I had? Have I made a DC offset there? Oh my god, I, I've broken music. No, I've changed my mind. I don't want it in sampler, uh, simpler. I want it in sampler because I like the forwards, backwards looping. So let's drop that sound back in. Let's go normalize volumes. Sorry if you don't have sampler, but if you haven't, why? Save up and buy it. You don't have to buy live suite. Just buy sampler. It's brilliant. Um, Stan snapping on. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fine. So yeah, we've got that click there at the start. Let's just apply a little bit of attack. And let's have quite a bit of release and turn off re-trigger and have the voices at six. That's fine. That sounds pretty tasty to me. Um, let's duplicate that. Duplicate that... Uh, sample sampler and drop in another one and focus in on this one okay again normalize apply the looping window turn up the crossfade 
That one sounds awful. <laughs> Let's not use that one. Let's try some of the that, that last one that we did that was really gosh, that's slightly frustrating. Okay. Drag that in there. Or maybe this one. Or maybe this one. Just drop just drop in any odd one. Yeah, they do all sound a bit samey, don't they? Yeah, you can definitely get that vibe, you know, that sort of uh, atmospheric, slightly unsettling, or maybe it's quite euphoric. I don't know. I went for like a minor chord um, with that second note in to make it a bit, a bit like, oh, God, what's going on? Because sometimes when you're raving, a little bit of the dark is quite, quite satisfying, isn't it? Let's try one of these other ones. Oh, goodness me. <laughs> Some of them. Yeah, actually, that first one is pretty much perfect. I think this one here. Okay, that's not looping quite so well. We didn't put the crossfade on. There we go. Okay, I'm going to try and record that now to a clip, let's say 160, <coughs> excuse me, uh, let's say one bar. Let's fire that off, record this in. Yeah, gosh, that click is loud. Tasty rave nuggets. All right, let's get a think break in. This think break I know is really loud, so I'm just going to turn it down a bit here. And I'm going to do a follow action thing here. I'm going to say play again. I'm going to say play again after this much. Is that going to work? Where's the end? Uh, yeah, let's try this one. Very nice quick way to sort of get your drum loop to do something other than just loop around is to use the follow action and play again. And you can sort of do that in lots of ways here. You can kind of set the um, start point, but then it'll get to here and loop, but then it'll only do it for the amount that you specify here. You could say like two bars if you want. Very quick way to get a vibe going. <laughs> that was me trying to do a kick drum. Bass drum, bass drop. Maybe I've got one somewhere. Let's go to... from uh, Human Synthetics YouTube told me about these. Yeah. Is that one of those in? Really incredibly low. like a bit of pitch bend let's do like a little bit of pitch bend like this or something <laughs> okay 
I think that'll do. So basically, what have I just done? Well, I went oh, into um, into Ableton and I froze it with a load of um, effects that have like freezing options. So the reverb has a freeze. Um, the hybrid reverb has a freeze. The spectral time has a freeze. Uh, I don't know if any others have that. Nothing springs to mind. Um, grain delay? No, that doesn't have a freeze. Anyway, so then what you can do is you can just freeze a bit of sound and then it kind of makes it go and then um, put it in a sampler, play like a moody chord, apply loads of filters, resample that, put that back into another sampler and then transpose it around. Uh, thus... And you are set for the rave. Okay, there you go. That is how you can make ethereal pads using your voice and some Ableton stock plugins in Ableton Live. <gasps> I'm going to go and put this set on my Patreon now, where if you'd like to support me on there, you can download this Ableton set plus many, many, many more and take part in all kinds of community-based things and even get some private tuition with me if you want. So I hope you enjoyed that. See you next time. What happened to the pad? Okay. Okay, cheers everyone. See you next time. Bye.